Hi everyone. Uh, I make it 14.29 on my clock but there is a little bit of a delay so hopefully this will start when you expect it to. Do um, say hi in chat when you uh, find us and let me know that you're there. I'm just checking that everything is as it should be. <laughs> Bear with me. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's any sound though. Have you got any sound, I wonder? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, everything's working. Right, I can get rid of the internet on there. And we should be fairly smooth. So, hope everyone's well. Um, as I say, do say hello <laughs> when you log in. And um, the platform that I use for live streaming has had an update. And I think I can chat back. So, oh, hello, Barbie. Sharon, hi. <laughs> Lovely to see you. I think I can say hello back. I think I can. <laughs> so it's a new development that we can have a play with. I don't know, my keyboard is quite far away. Um, so we'll have to see how we're getting on. Hope everyone's well. I've got a bit of a cold, so if I'm a bit gravelly and growly, I do apologise. Um, we've been struck down. I blame my son. He brought it in and now we've all got it. So um you'll have to bear with me um if i'm very low pitched i do go very very deep when i've got a cold and my one of the chaotic things about this morning is that i've broken my glasses again so um <laughs> i've actually got a pin that i've just chopped off with a pair of pliers um, holding them together because the opticians is closed because it's sunday so let me know what you've been up to today that's been my morning um I've also filmed next week's video and I'm really looking forward to that one going live. So do look out for that. I think it's going to be a good one. And um, yeah, that's been a crazy morning. Um, my daughter is busy baking a European cake for homework. She started secondary school a few weeks ago. So she's um, still finding homework to be quite a novelty. And this week for French, she has to make a European cake. So I think it's German apple cake on the menu today. So hopefully that will be <laughs> happening in the background and uh, the house won't burn down or anything like that. She is quite a good cook, so I, I will uh, trust her. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> it was getting a bit desperate. I couldn't having done it a couple of times i couldn't make you all sit and watch me try and thread a needle without glasses on another uh, for another live stream so it's just typical isn't it that they actually broke yesterday it's something it's just the screw that's come out but i can't find it anywhere so um i've had to improvise <laughs> really quickly so let me know in the chat what you've been up to this morning and um yeah we'll be good to hear from you i'm gonna switch screens so that you can see a little bit more closely i've got lots of threads half of these will disappear very very shortly so here are our complementary colors panels so this was our first one really shocked at how popular this one was um i, I wasn't sure at all how this would go down with uh, everybody at home 
<laughs> um, but yeah, it seems to have caught everybody's imagination and I'm hoping that Hanny Newton, who inspired this piece, has gained quite a lot of followers um, and likes and shares and things like that um, after we did that. So that was our first one. So we've been exploring couching this month and this was just using very simple couching techniques to make our swells and create some depth by making some of our threads closer together some further apart and because it's me i can't not use beads so uh, we put some beaded sections in there as well and then this one really divided the crowd <laughs> um i did apple for teacher the problem was school and in my defense i was just starting back at school in a new uh on a new site as well so i work for multi-academy trust and i have been at one school for the last few years and i've moved to another school in the mat so um it's been quite a tough couple of weeks and i think my creativity took a nose dive at the beginning of september so um this was apple for the teacher and we did some couch lettering which i think a few people have commented on how much they prefer couch lettering to actually stitching it so i think at the very least it's made that a possibility for people and then we use some just different stitches different couching techniques we did our couch cord up here and a little couch leaf and then we use strips of fabric to create an apple and we just worked our way into the center and in hindsight i would have done it the other way around so this was our chunkiest layer and i think it should have been at the center so that the apple sort of domed out and then our flatter ones could have been around the edge i think that would have been a much cleverer idea and might have appealed to more people and i also found that the stitching just didn't show up because they were close together it just you couldn't really tell what is going on there at all but um you can't win them all so that's that one and this is an accurate record of me winging it each week throughout this year <laughs> so you can i think there needs to be a couple of duffers in there because it shows that i am winging it just like you are and then this one was really popular so this one was last week's and i had actually filmed all of these in august because i knew that september was going to be quite um a demanding month so i had no idea that the purple and gold idea was going to be so relevant and i don't tend to comment on or refer to current events because i do want feather stitch house to be a safe place that you can come to get away from everything that's going on in the world so um yeah so karen i'm noticing your <laughs> your comment about the close-up it does work really well when it works and i don't know why but it's recently been really struggling to focus close up there we go it gets there in the end but um yeah it's it takes its time sometimes so this was our insects prompt and we used our needle felting and made a little three-dimensional bee and we used different couching techniques all over this so we got some thread blending as well and we did our couch cords and then we did uh, circular couching with bricking technique if we get it really close if it'll focus you can see the bricking a little bit clearer there where you offset each layer so it looks like brickwork and then we did loop couching we did one that we couched down at both ends and then one that we let loose and that one was just sequins that we held down with a simple stitch the bee was couched down and if you remember i also couched the couching because it's on a slope it's curved the stitches want to fall off so i don't think it's is it good enough to pick up i wonder maybe um so i couched down the couching stitches 
so that they held in place and it just made the bee that little bit more secure another couple of bits of loop couching for the wings and then we did some bunched couching here and just some zigzag couching where i worked the thread backwards and forwards like that and just couched it down with a couple of stitches and i blended some threads there as well so you've got a lighter purple and a darker purple so that's where we're up to so far and i wanted to keep it fairly simple this week because these are such bold designs i think that um i wanted something equally bold but i've obviously run up run out of combinations of complementary colors and i toyed with the idea of doing black and white but we did a whole month of monochrome back in january with our straight stitches and so i thought why not just do all of them so i've gone for black and white nails but um i have got some colors here and i have got a black piece of felt um this is going to be almost completely covered so it doesn't really matter if you don't want to do black felt you don't have to but i had run out of ideas um before i'd run out of options basically for my background felt so i'm going to be working on this black piece and you might be able to see i've marked in my margins there um so that i've got my eight by eight square in the middle and i've put in three circles simply because i want something to work around and i'm going to leave it up to you so you can um you can let me know in the comments what you think i've got two options so i've got some brights here so i've got my pairs of complementary colors in bright tones so these are just fairly pure colors these are ones that i've used already um or i've got a sort of muted version here so i've got it's a more i don't know whether the camera's going to pick it up it's a more sort of muted version so you can let me know and i've got plenty of options here i've got loads of sari silks bits of t-shirt yarn and i was struggling for a sort of muted yellow so i've just torn a strip of fabric there that i can use um that's as close as i could get to black and white it has got a couple of colors on there but i think we'll get away with it um, so I hadn't got a muted yellow in my anchor pearl cottons and I hadn't got a muted purple either. So I've got two, I've got a sheepies sweet treat for the purple and I've got one of my um, studio, fax, studio flax linens for the muted yellow. So you can decide whether you think I should do the brights or the muted. I've got options for both. Let me know in the comments what what you want to choose. I'm going to start with the black and white while you're letting me know. So whoever gets in there first <laughs> can choose what I do today. Um, so I'm just going to start off with some black thread. And what we're going to do is just do loads and loads of couched tubes so it's going to be similar to what we did with the apple but because we're not clustering them quite so close together and, and working them round in circles i'm hoping it will show up a bit better so i've got my white fabric here and i'm, I'm just trying to roll it so that it's a little bit tighter now i'm wondering whether i should split it down the middle let's see let's see what happens so t-shirt yarn um i've had a few people get in touch with me and ask me where i get it from i actually got it as a gift from my mum who bought me lots of a uh, box of sort of crafty bits last christmas and i've got i think she got it from ebay but you can make it so if you've got old t-shirts that you no longer wear or use or if you we had a jumble sale in our village last week and um there's loads of clothes always for sale um 
you just simply cut strips out of your t-shirt and I'm hoping that it will work with this so that I can show you what you do next so I've just cut a strip there hoping that's going to be long enough um, so yeah you cut your strip and then you pull it and when you pull it it sort of curls in on itself so that that was fairly flat you see how it's curled um, and you can keep just keep pulling and working at it um, it needs to be wide enough that it can fully curl but it will curl around like that and um, it makes a sort of tube that you can work with Karen thinks bites <laughs> We'll start with black and white. See, see what other people think. I'm, I am leaning towards brights. So I have to say because the rest of the panel is bright, so it just seems to make sense. But I'm quite happy to do a muted one. So I'm going to start just with fairly simple couching, but I'm going to group it. So what I'm going to try and do is work around I'm gonna make a little spiral I've just pulled it out it's a good start isn't it let's leave a little bit more through there I'm gonna work it around in a little circle around one of the circles that I've done but then we're going to use the other circles to sort of meander it will make sense as I get going so let's put two together and then leave a gap and then put two together again. So we're going to play around. We've tried bunched couching and we've done looped couching. So this time we're going to focus on our decorative stitching and sort of playing around with the stitches that we use to couch to create some interesting looks. So I'm just working that in around that circle. I'm just reading your comment fully Karen. I, I agree. I think it will look like part of the panel. And I'm just adding in some black and white because technically it's not they're not colors are they but they are <laughs> um so um just gonna now i've got that a bit more secure i'm just gonna work that to the edge put another couple of stitches in just while i'm nearby So now I'm going to meander back and we're just going to sort of wander about our square with our couching and try and butt the fabrics up to each other so that we're creating sort of tubes for want of a better description. You could do these in just straight lines if you wanted to, but I wanted to create a little bit of movement. So in prepping for this I've discovered that I don't have a huge amount of white fabric hence the not entirely white piece that I'm using looks very 80s this I think the black and white with splodges of colour that's, that's my my era So 
So I know we've always got more people watching than chatting. So if you haven't chatted before and you're tuning in, do say hi. I always like to discover where in the world everybody's watching from. So um, not after your address, obviously, but you can uh, <laughs> let me know what country you're in. I think we broke our record last month because we had somebody from Australia. I think that's the furthest away anybody's ever been. Hi, Ray. Thanks for joining us. We are couching and using decorative stitches. So I'm starting with black and white. My son wanted me to do an entirely black and white piece, but um, I just couldn't bring myself to do it, partly because I didn't have any enough white fabrics. But that might be a really interesting option for your fourth square. So if you wanted to do black and white, that would add to the mix so we we're doing all our complementaries this time in an attempt to tie our piece together so i quite enjoyed our couching month um it's different it's been very different because we've been using increasingly complex stitching as we've gone through it it's been nice to go back to something just actually that's really quite simple but very effective so i hope you've enjoyed couching i know it's not a new technique to most people but i hope you think we've explored it in an interesting way so haven't just done the kind of couching that um you might have come across before but tried to use it in creative ways to help show what's possible really with this technique so hi from south africa <laughs> hi anna marie Great to uh, great to have you with us. I used to live in South Africa. Thank you so much. That's a lovely thing to say. Um, I'm enjoying doing it. September has been very fraught. I think I'm I'm in. I found my groove again now. It's hard. Um, you teaching you don't get any sort of warm up. You're just in straight away. Um. And the kids just keep coming. There's, <laughs> there's no, there's no getting away from it. They are just, they are timetabled to come to your room, and they will arrive, and you can't delay them. Um, they just keep coming. So it, it, it's been pretty full on and quite relentless for the last couple of weeks, but um, I'm starting to find my groove again now it's i feel like i've had sensory overload for a month because i've been at home obviously working from home for the last year and i was during lockdown i worked from home and because i'm clinically vulnerable we worked out that i'd only actually been in school for five months out of the last three years um, and all the rest of the time i was teaching but i was teaching from home so I haven't been around so many people and the school I've gone to is absolutely enormous. Um, it's one of the largest schools in the UK and it's it's been quite a culture shock, let me tell you. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like riding a bike, you just get back into it. And even though I feel like I haven't been in school for absolutely ages, it just comes back to you. You don't forget how to do it. Um, so it's all right. It could be worse. Would I rather be at home sewing? 
<laughs> probably but then I think most people would rather be at home sewing than doing most other things so most people who sew anyway so um yeah it's all good right I'm not entirely certain I like the um shape that I've created but it is what it is and we can maybe do some playing I'm sure it will look better as we fill it in so we are going a, a little bit random using our couching so you can see I've done that double band across it um, I don't know whether I'll put any more black and white in I might put another might put another one strip but we'll see let's add some other colors in first so i'm just trimming that off at the end i'm trying to make sure that i haven't got loads of finishing to do so i want this to be one where once you've done you've done so um i teach english um hi barbie <laughs> i teach english um so english language and english literature um english language in this country is all about the technicalities of language so it's their reading comprehension and ability to write for different purposes and audiences um uh, but my 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 real love is teaching literature just absolutely come to life when i'm teaching lit um so yeah it's my favorite um so have we decided that I'm going bright? Should we go bright? Um, I, for those of you that have just arrived, I um, uh, I was asking whether you thought I should do a bright version or a muted version. Karen thinks bright. I'm leaning towards bright because I think it will tie in with the other panels we've done. But I'll just give it um a couple of I'll give it a couple of minutes so you can chip in. Um, Ray, I'm impressed. <laughs> Don't cut yourself. Um, I've left preparing dinner to everybody else in my house so um, they can get on with it while I'm uh, spending time with you fine people. So I, I think I would like to teach art. My, tr my problem with art is um, it's, it's so messy. <laughs> Children make such a mess. They make a mess in English lessons so um, I don't know that I could cope with being in an art room, but I could, I would I think I I've got a I've got a notion that I might ask if I can do a bit of textiles at some point. So um might be might be interesting. Oh look, I've pushed the muted away and now somebody's voted for muted. So um I'll just give it a couple of uh, couple of minutes. Hi Juniper. <laughs> um Hi Marie as well. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the chat whilst looking at what I'm doing as well. Um, I've I've I can't listen to audio books when I'm doing something else. The only thing the only time it works, Karen, is when I'm driving. So I commute a fair distance to work. So I've been enjoying lots of Bill Bryson books recently on my commute. Um, so I'm having some fun i think the general feel is bright so um maybe i'll i'll do a muted one off camera while i'm sitting watching i think we're watching spider-man um tonight we've been working through the marvel films my son is a marvel encyclopedia on legs and um so he just he's got the whole lot and my daughter now is becoming obsessed with marvel as well right i think where should we go should we do yellow orange let's get some orange in there because i think it's a nice contrast to the white i think the yellow just isn't strong enough next to that white so let's get some orange in 
so I've got my orange sari silks if you don't have sari silks just strips of fabric I was saying earlier I didn't have any muted yellow so I just tore a strip and I'll just have sort of rolled it um, fairly roughly but I'd have rolled it like that and worked it along next to um, it would have looked better than that I'm just rushing it so um, you can just use fabrics if you want to hi Sylvie oh Juniper's in Toronto I absolutely adore Canada I've only been once um, I went to Calgary and it's one of my favourite holidays that I've ever been on um, it's, it was a long time ago as well 2003 when I was there right so I'm just going to leave a little bit extra that I can trim off of that orange just to get it started and I think I'm going to do cross stitches on this one so we are laying our little tubes of fabric down and using decorative couching stitches to hold them down seems a, such a shame to hide that frayed edge away I do love the frayed edges that you get on sari silks but it's not what we're looking for for this piece I just I love the brightness of these silk fabrics they're just so vibrant absolutely love them you will have noticed that I use them quite often so rather than twisting so with the apple I sort of twisted it but this time I want to more sort of roll it around we're reducing the texture this time we're trying to enhance the texture with the apple but this time we're trying to tone it down a little bit so just little crosses all the way along and i hope that you can see what i'm doing i'm just laying this little tube of orange next to the tube of white and gradually we'll just cover up the black felt and just be left with quite a Quite a bold sort of abstract piece. Let's focus, I guess, on a combination of fabric and stitch in our complementary colours. So I've got all of the colours, all six of my colours, and I'm basically going to use complementary colours together. So when I put blue fabric down I'll use orange thread and I'm using obviously orange fabric here with blue thread and so I'll just keep the complementaries together I'm just pushing that in with my thumb just to keep it nice and close in bit of an optical illusion with that white because there's some bits of black on it and I keep thinking that I've left a gap but I haven't um, it's just the print on the fabric I keep poking at it <laughs> um, thinking I've got a gap but it, it is just the print So let me know if you're stitching along or if you're just watching and I'll plan on stitching later. I know Ray's preparing vegetables but uh, <laughs> what everybody else is up to.
it's very frayed on this bit i can't hide it it's looking a little bit caterpillar like or millipede like i'm hoping i'll be able to cover up those frayed bits though so that it just looks really sort of smooth relatively smooth Yeah, it's the curse of the Northern Hemisphere, isn't it, Juniper? We, uh, it's very, very grey here today. It was pouring yesterday here in Lincolnshire. And today it's just like we're inside a Tupperware box. It's grey and bleak. And I don't mind frost. I don't mind the cold, but I, I don't like... Um, I don't like grey weather. But, um, I find it troubling. <laughs> I do like sunshine. We are coming into my favourite season. I really, really adore autumn. It's my absolute favourite. I love everything about it. I, I even like when the clocks go back. I know that not every country does that. But uh, the last Saturday in October... We put the clocks back to Greenwich Mean Time. And it just signals to me that it's a time for cosiness. And everything's just getting cosy and toasty. And you can start eating soup again and having all those nice wintry things. It means that Christmas isn't too far away. Something nice to look forward to. And I like those really crisp mornings when it's sunny but cold. And that's my favourite kind of weather. I am I'm not somebody who enjoys extremes at all. I'm not a fan of summer and I'm not a fan of winter. But the in-betweens. I love it. Hello, Alberta. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. Lovely to have you with us. We are properly covering the globe today. Gosh. Meanwhile, who was it that was from South Africa? It's It's gone off the top of my screen now. Um... You will just be coming into spring, won't you? It's uh, that's a fairly delightful time in South Africa as well. I lived there in the year two thousand, and um, one of one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. We did a little tour of the garden route. Um, just a short one got as far as George we can get all the way along it because we only had a week but um, just breathtakingly beautiful loved it and I love the fact that you could plan to have a barbecue or a braai rather and, um, and you absolutely knew you would be able to go ahead with it because once the rain stopped it was wall to wall sunshine for the rest of the year so uh, yeah i would like to go back at some point it's not a very good cross i do try really hard not to unpick anything on camera because it's we're meant to be winging it and it, whatever happens, happens. And never was that more so than the week where we did play the ball where it lies, where we just dropped stuff <laughs> and stitched it down where it landed. That was that was quite a challenge that week because right up until very close to the end, I thought it might be the worst thing I'd ever done. And then it just came together and looked really fun. So, I'm 
Look at us Brits talking about the weather, leading the discussion about the weather. <laughs> that's that's our favourite topic. To be fair to us, we we have a lot of weather in the UK. Um, it's very changeable and it can be boiling hot one minute and freezing cold the next. And you never really know what you're going to get. And so I think that's why. British people find it to be their number one <laughs> topic of conversation because there's generally quite a lot to be said about our weather. So, um, oh gosh, I didn't really think about cats, Karen. <laughs> that must have been hilarious. Yeah, I did. It was. The fabrics was fine, wasn't it? It was when we got to buttons and beads, they just were flying absolutely everywhere. It was a bit of a nightmare. Right, there's some orange. Let's let's have a play. And not happy with the shade of blue that I've pulled out. So um, I think it's just a little bit too muted. I've got this nice bright one. So what about if we did the reverse on the other side of the white so if we did blue the other side with some orange just making design design decisions on the fly here so let's see how it goes so anyone want to suggest a stitch while i um thread up my needle can't think what we did we did blanket stitch didn't we herringbone Oh gosh. Pamela, are you talking Fahrenheit or Celsius? <laughs> we went in the spring, we came to Canada in the spring and it it felt it was so hot we packed for what we expected spring weather to be like, but it was about twenty five degrees when we were there, but there was still um snow everywhere it was amazing um so we went to some of the lakes and the snow was still deep enough that you couldn't sit on a bench because they were effectively level with with the ground um so i've just held my blue down there i'll wait until you uh give us <laughs> give me a stitch to do um gosh yes celsius minus 25 that's that's pretty cold i think our record here in the uk is minus 16 that was what year was that 2010 we had the winter that wouldn't end we had snow on the ground and it froze solid and didn't go until close to april um so but yes lots of cozy places you're very well equipped aren't you as well in canada i discovered when i was there we in calgary we could go almost the whole we could walk all across the um city without actually setting foot outside because there's tunnels and uh walkways and all sorts of things that you could go in and um so you never ha actually had to go outside right i think blanket stitch was the first one and i'll do a ladder next time uh, when I do my next one but if anyone wants to suggest a stitch do go for it look I've gone wrong straight away that's me thinking ladder and trying to be blanket stitch so I just put a, a straight stitch over the end there just to secure it and um, then we'll start doing our blanket I've got quite a tight curve here in a second. So I'm going to have to sort of fan my blanket stitches out. So they're going to be close together at the bottom and wider apart at the top. So they'll look a bit like triangles. 
and tell them where I'm going to spend. But um, they'll leave that again in a moment. Oh, good grief. <laughs> yeah, we, we arrived in South Africa in um, January. And when we left the UK, it was two degrees Celsius. And we had our flight and got off the plane. We were all in boots and jeans and jumpers because it had been so cold. And we got off the plane, it was 42 degrees. And I've never done a... 40 degree temperature jump in one day before and it was like walking into a wall getting off the plane it was I've never experienced anything like it um so it's yeah it it does get extremely hot doesn't it but uh Lots, lots of good though. I think everything's a bit too hot these days, isn't it? Oh gosh, that looks a little bit funky there, but uh, it's all right. We're round now, and it will level itself out. Not sure about that. I can, I hope I hope it's not picking up on the microphone. I can hear the sounds of baking coming from another part of the house. So um German apple cake apparently is on its way. Again, I'm trying to tuck in my frayed edges so that it looks a little bit smoother. I feel like I need a third hand when I'm couching with anything other than a straight stitch. I just need an extra hand. What are we getting there? I'll go up to this edge and then I will cut it off and then I'll start back where I would have come out if I hadn't reached the edge. I need one more stitch in there. And when I'm trimming my fabric, I'm just using my border lines as um, a guide. So I'm just running my scissors along that margin to trim it off. That's where we're up to so far. That's my dodgy bit there um, in that tight corner. But uh, hey ho, <laughs> it'll be all right. Just trimming that bit off and then I can restart it on this other side.
always a little bit extra again. I'm sort of faking the start of my bonnet kit stitch there because I just need to hold it down. And we can just carry on. On this other side. Yeah, it does, Karen, yeah. Sorry, I just... Uh, um, It does look a little bit like snakes. I'm I'm hoping we'll get rid of the snakiness um, shortly. Because we can... Once we get into these curves, we can have a bit of a play. Yeah, the snake was another one that divided the crowd. Can't please everybody, can you? <laughs> um, but there's some interesting alternatives. I did like um, somebody did a dragon, didn't they? And uh, there were lots of alternative creatures. So. Uh, seem like the most obvious to me and then afterwards I wished I'd done a phoenix I, I thought thought about it afterwards we were doing hot colours and a phoenix would have been perfect wouldn't it bursting into flames that would have been quite a fun idea but I don't know once I find myself going down I think I distracted myself by thinking about octopuses because I was trying it it's always tricky because if it was just the colours I was thinking about I I it would be fine but what I'm always trying to do is thinking about um is think about the combination of the colours and the stitches so there are ideas that I have for the colours that I can't think of a way to use the stitches with and there are some ideas that I have for stitches that don't work with the colours and I because I've just done the stitch tutorial video and um, the last one I did was the cup stitch and as I was stitching it I thought gosh they, these look like octopus suckers and I, then I couldn't get that idea out of my head and then I quite liked the sort of long tentacly idea and landed on snake I would have done a lizard but then I got my copy of Love Embroidery magazine and discovered that there was a lizard in it and so I didn't want to duplicate an idea so um, snake seem to be the next best alternative, yeah. But yes, there was there was quite a lot of <laughs> people had lots of opinions about the snakes, just like they did about my apple. So um, you can't please everybody. They are just prompts, so you can always go completely in your own direction.
Right, let's trim the ends of this one off. And I think I'm going to go purple next. Oh, gosh. There's a, <laughs> there's a fade bit there that's just tightening me off. Now I have got a little gap there. It's all right. I don't mind. Right, let's go purple and yellow. Love this purple one. It's just so fruity. It's a fruity purple. I'm going to try and roll it a bit. I should have got my thread first though. making a pumpkin it's that like carving a pumpkin or making one out of fabric or very creative afternoon Oh, thanks, Cameron. Sorry, I'm just, I've just i been distracted by my blanket stitch. I'm just coming back to the comments. Um, yeah, I do, I do try and give lots of ideas. And, I mean, you're all free always to do whatever you like. And uh, you might prefer some of the other ideas. Um, next week's video has caused a... Uh, quite a lot of division in our household because my kids wanted me to do something different what am I doing this time a ladder so my understanding of ladder is open chain stitch so that's what <laughs> that's what I'm going if I go to do if that's not what you meant let me know and I'll try and work it out I've messed that up already as well. Let's try and do a little fix on that. <clears throat> right, I've confused myself. I need to start that again. Look, I'm doing what I'm not supposed to do. I'm picking. Oh, I'm losing my grip here. What a mess. <laughs> I'm trying to do too many things at once. That's what I'm trying to do. Might need to just pin this purple one because it's unravelling. It's getting to be too wide. And so I'm concentrating more on the purple than I am on the stitch. And it's... I keep messing it up, so I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in. If I can find my pins, there they are. Sorry, folks. Brief intermission of my life. <laughs> Work out what on earth it is I'm supposed to be doing. That pin's blunt. There we go. Right. Let's try that again. We'll pretend that didn't happen. And we'll just try again. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Karen. I'm not a fan of snakes. They're, they are in no way an animal that I like. I think they are horrible looking things. But um, 
they are you can't get away from the fact that they are really quite beautiful the patterning and things on their backs is just really very pretty and worked a treat it was exactly the right sort of thing for the prompt that we were doing so and the stitches and i agree beads make everything better i i am a firm believer in the power of beads as you will have if you've watched even two or three of my winging it videos now you will know i love a bit of beading I think it is the light i think i think you you've got you've got it there karen i think it is the the way they change the way light behaves on a piece and i i tend to use anchor threads i know they're not easily available everywhere but i i much prefer them because they are less shiny i find dmc too shiny for my taste they do have some really lovely colors though um and I, it's not that i don't use dmc it's just anchor are my go-to threads i like dmc's variegated threads um i think they've got some really lovely color combos and um i just like to have more control over where the shine is on any pieces that i create and i find the the sheen on anchor is far flatter um and i know that's exactly the reason why some people prefer dmc because they love the sheen but i i just i don't know people like different things don't they so um yeah anchor is my go-to i think they um the colors um dmc as well the color changes in different lights and um because anchor are a bit flatter colors are the the to the sort of sheen of them is a bit flatter they are the color they are and i do i do find that on fill stitches they tend to cover a bit better in my experience but particularly the black um and i do I, I mean i read a lot of sort of embroidery discussion things and a lot read a lot about embroidery and a lot of people find that um, anchors black gives better coverage if you want to completely fill a shape but um you've just got to find what works for you haven't you and uh, everybody's got their favorite thing So I'm just reading those um that comment from Pamela about finding blanket stitch tricky to start. I think when I'm working on a flat, it's always worth starting with the the sort of horizontal of the stitch. And you can always put in a vertical if you want the end closed, you can always put in a, a fake vertical at the end um and i know people have trouble starting and finishing blanket stitch if you're stitching around the end of something around the edge um and my i have got some videos about how i'm turning my winging it pages into a book there's a playlist on that on my channel and I do, I'm not saying it's the only way, but I do talk about the method I use to get a really neat finish on my blanket stitch. So that might be worth having a look at. I might pick up a couple of tips, but there are lots of ways of doing it, I'm sure. And that is just my way. Uh, so now I've run out of pins and it's all going pear shaped again. I need to put some more pins in. The bit 
bit that I pinned has run out and now I'm trying to manage the purple again. It is, it's when I've got too many things to do. It's it's not it's not the most straightforward of stitches, um open chain stitch. It's needs a bit of thought. Looks fab, but um yeah, it's not one to do while you're talking to somebody else. I can't remember the um the stitch that I couldn't do. What was the stitch that I couldn't do last month on camera? Was it road stitch? Just couldn't seem to get it right on camera. <laughs> I can do it fine when I'm not talking at the same time. I seem to have to really concentrate on that one. I'm just going to keep going along. I could just put more pins in, couldn't I? That would Maybe that's what I should do. I'm going to pin it all the way along and I won't have to keep stopping. I'm also very aware that you might you might be asking me things <laughs> and I'm so intently concentrating on this now that I'm not looking up. Bear with me. Normal service will resume shortly. I know someone was talking about um German apple cake a minute ago. That's gonna be I might have to scroll up on the comments. Bear with me. I've missed quite a lot. Right, I've got Ray's comment about making a pumpkin out of the re recycled jumper. That sounds like a lot of fun. I hope you're going to post pictures so that I can see. They always look really cute, don't they? I love fabric pumpkin pumpkins. I, I just, I, I think they just look really sweet. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> I, I am, I am a very much take me as you find me kind of person. So, I think it's good for you to see that. Sometimes I tie myself in knots because we we all do it, don't we? Um, and it is tricky when you're not working in a frame and you're doing stitches that really you could do with both hands for. It's not. It's not straightforward. You you'll see from my stitch videos that um particularly one where I cover this. We we did this in chain stitch variations. Back in gosh, when did we do chain stitch variations? June? Is it June? Or July, maybe July. Um I do use two hands a lot because I my grip's not very good because of my arthritis. So it um I do rely on two hands a lot of the time and it's quite tricky when you're, you're not working in a frame to manage stitches like this if you also don't have a good grip. I can't feel the needle, that's part of my problem. I, I've got very little sensation in the tips of my fingers and I can't feel the needle very easily and so it's difficult to judge where things are because I can't feel them I have to I have to do it by sort of muscle memory mostly right I've got a tight corner here as well so let's see if I can manage this one slightly better than the last one
Right, I'm getting to the end of my thread and I'm going to try not to do my usual trick of using up the very last tiny little bits and making it hard for myself to finish off. So I'm just going to secure this um, step of the ladder and then get myself some more thread. I might have to put a couple of little anchor stitches over there just because of that curve it's the stitches don't want to sit like I want them to sit Might have to put another fake horizontal at the end there. I think it's just looking like it it needs one. Do you suggest my next stitch by the way? <laughs> oh thanks Barbie, thanks for joining us. Enjoy, enjoy um, the rest of your day. And as always, it will all be there to watch later. So you'll be able to see the finished piece. And I post the finished piece to Instagram as well. Pretty quickly after we finished it. So, um... Oh, it's so much easier with pins in. <laughs> I feel like doing an LOLO reference, you stupid woman. <laughs> That's often how I refer to myself in my classroom at school. Kids get to know me very quickly. I I am vaguely eccentric and never really know what's going on <laughs> um, in the best possible way. I'll put something down and immediately forget where I've put it. And so I do warn them early on that I spend a good portion of my time looking for things that I just had in my hand a minute ago. I don't know whether it's my age or medication or what, but um, I'm sewing through my fabric there. Hang on a second. A bit more on picking, look. Good job I'm secure, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be glad when this one finishes. It's um I I love the way it looks, but it's um it's not an easy one for me to do on camera. I do need both hands.
I'm having to concentrate really hard as well, which means that I can't easily talk, which is the point of a live stream, I think. But there we go. I hope the camera's not focus hunting too much. I find it really annoying when it happens, but um it's either that or you can't see anything close up, so You know, I'm negotiating pins as well, so my loops keep getting caught around the pins. Oh, I'll be pleased when it's over this one. I think I might need to do a straight stitch one next because um, it's been too taxing for me. <laughs> I'm going to need to lie down, I think, after open chain stitch. Looks fun though. The things we do for our craft. Nearly there. Hang in there, folks. It's almost over. <laughs> the ordeal is nearly finished. Watching me do open chain stitch. Right, I'm just going to anchor those, that last bar down. Just at my outside edge. Oh, phew. Thank goodness for that. Right. Keep my pins handy just in case I need them again. That's quite a fun one. It was worth persevering, I think. There we go. And we're going to go the other one purple on the other side. I think I'm going to do a green one though first. Over here. Or shall I go red? No, I think green next to the purple. So let's thread up with some red. And I'm going to do a little bit of a, a straight stitch one again. Because we've got quite a busy stitch there. I want it to look a bit balanced. So. I don't want to go straight on to another busy stitch. I think putting putting another colour next to it will tone down the yellow a little bit as well. It's quite a bright yellow that. So as we always do, we're just sort of stitching, seeing what's needed next. I'm wondering whether I should leave a bit of black around the edge as well. Let me know what you think. We've just got our swirl through the centre. Should I leave black at the edges or shall I try and fill it all in? You tell me. So now I've moved my chat bar up. And now I don't know what's happened at the bottom. Right, this is an easy one, so I can catch up on the chat now. Oh, thank you, Janae. These are anchor pearl cottons, and I can. They have little stickers on the inside that have got the shades. Some of them I have had them. For, there's so much on here. Have had them for quite a long time. So the red that I'm using is forty six 
is my second favourite anchor colour. First favourite is 47, which is, uh, it's not as dark as that. It's, it's like a, a blood red. Um, the orange is 332. Three, three, the blue is 410. Purple is 112. Green is 239. The yellow is 291. So I know I did that quite quickly, but you can you can always rewind a little bit. Just use the slider bar at the bottom. You can go back a little bit and listen back to the numbers. So that's Anchor and you can look online for DMC equivalents. My sheet's next door with all my equivalent numbers on it. So um, I mean in the next room, not next door with my next door neighbour. Um, but uh, as I tell you, but you can you can find those equivalencies fairly easily. So if you can't get hold of anchor pearl cottons, I mean you don't have to use pearl cotton. You can just use the uh, normal six strand threads because the the numbers are exactly the same from pearl cotton to the six stranded threads. So um, just quite like pearl cotton these are size eight pearl cottons so fairly chunky and they stand out really nicely against because they're, they're sizable they stand out quite nicely and obviously they're twisted threads they're non-divisible so you get a really nice clean line of you don't have to worry about your threads separating them at all anything like that and they've got more of a sheen to them than the stranded cottons as well. So this one, I wanted that because I think it, it works well with the sari silk, which has also got a bit of a sheen. So it looks like it's meant to be. Right, so back to the uh, back to the chat. <laughs> yeah, I I follow Sarah um, quite closely. She does really helpful videos. Um, she's she's very sort of thorough, isn't she, with her information. So we more about the sort of creative side of things. Um, I know she does that as well, but uh, we're just sort of making stuff. <laughs> um, we do a little bit of helpful information along the way, but it's mostly just projects that you can have a go at over here. Um, just I like her style. She's very skilled. I'm just reading your comment about your road stitch, Karen. I think road stitch, um, you, you get the. I do love it. You definitely get the best effect with road stitch if you're working on even weave fabric or counted fabric because it just looks magic. It it looks amazing. I do quite like doing them free form, but they do take quite a bit of concentration. Right, I'm just gonna take the opportunity while I'm there to pull that yellow stitch, catch it with my my red thread there and it's not ideal 
but I think it will just hold it in place a little bit better and because the green fabric is right next to it you won't be able to tell too badly what I've done there Hi Ginny um, sorry, I'm just working my way down the comments. I know you probably commented about 20 minutes ago, but um, I was doing open chain stitch and having a little bit of a moment. So <laughs> I'm just catching up. Right, that's that one done. So I can go back and work on the other side now. I might do a... Um, I think we need a herringbone stitch. Absolutely love herringbone stitch. Right up there for me. With, with amongst my favourite of all time. Right, what am I doing? Yellow with purple thread. I need to go back down to the bottom of my bar. Oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, those uh, uh, chain stitch variations were back in July. So if you want to find out about how to do open chain stitch properly, <laughs> rather than the way I've just done it, um, go watch my July video and rest assured that <laughs> I can do it. I just need a frame um right yellow that's what we were doing so i'm coming down this other side oh there's another really wide one that i might have to pin let's see how we go i'm just going to put a bar across the end even though that's not part of having bone stitch i just want to hold my uh yellow silk in place so then i can go up and hang those stitches a bit like cross stitch but we're going to do a little back stitch before we do our next diagonal and just go back the way we came ever so slightly so that it crosses over at the bottom this is Essentially, it's the back of blind hemming stitch. So blind hemming stitch, you just want the little back stitches showing so that they are virtually invisible. But with herringbone stitch, we're playing with the crisscross and we want that on show. I oh, like this one. Toodle fairing bone stitch. Oh no, Ray, I can't, I hope that's all right. I'm just noticing your comment about your fingers. I hope that's all all right and that you're not um, unable to stitch for very long. Um, my dad's has, <laughs> it always sounds funny when I say it. He's had four hip replacements. <laughs> uh, and he's rapidly working towards a fifth, I think. He had his hips replaced. We don't have very good bones in our family. We have quite a lot of things that are really good. Um, my mum and my grandma both, my grandma had and my mum has the most incredible skin and um, amazing teeth. 
so we our teeth seem really good in our family we're genetically predisposed to have good skin and good teeth but not great with bones and i don't know which i'd rather have <laughs> um so my dad's heading towards his fifth hip replacement he had his hip replaced the first time when he was just 57 and he was up and about within 24 hours so hopefully things have moved along sufficiently that if you do have to have anything done it's short-lived i know they like you to be mobile pretty quickly i quite like that one with crisscrosses that's made me very happy that one i hope that's all right Ray. <laughs> yeah i i think these kids they watch me in the classroom just looking at your comment karen about things hiding themselves on tables i think these kids that i teach i teach about 300 kids at the moment that's that's how many come through my classroom in a week just i've got a lot of groups and um i think they just think i'm absolutely bonkers <laughs> but uh they'll know i think i i quite like the fact that i know things that they don't that they will understand <laughs> what it's like when when they're my age they'll understand what it's like to be a middle-aged woman <laughs> and not be able to remember instantly the names of your own children at times so um they'll get there oh i need an extra bit of yellow don't i around that a bit oh i've jumped too soon look i need to put a little bit of yellow around here I quite like it with the black edges i don't know what you think i quite like a bit of black there there's not going to be much because i'm going to put another layer around here of red with green thread but i do quite like it it's so bold against the black i, I don't know tell me what you think i'm thinking i might not go to the edge It's just so striking. Right, last bit of herringbone. What I haven't decided quite yet is what I'm going to do to join, to decorate the joins between my panels for this page. Because we've done stitches up to now that have given a, a really clear option for how I decorate my panel joins. I'll show you my, um, I haven't posted it yet on Instagram. I've finally stitched over the joins on my August page. So I'll show you that in a minute. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do on this one with couching. Let's have a think. An idea will present itself, I'm quite sure. Uh, October, it's always terrifying when we get to our live stream because it it means that 
it's almost a new month and this i don't know about you this year seems to have flown by for me i think well it always does when you're having fun doesn't it i've enjoyed this year so much um made so many friends that i'm so grateful for and um yeah it's just absolutely flying past and i forgot what i was saying what was i going to say yeah um so yeah it's nearly time for a new month uh and a new set of stitches so that it is filmed it's in the process of being edited and should be with you before october but it's some fun stitches because we're getting towards the advanced end of things now so um <laughs> uh yeah it's all getting exciting so there's a real stinker in there that just full disclosure i had to film at least four times because i i just could not get it right it just wouldn't do what i wanted it to do and um it's one i've done before on instagram but um it's a real tricky stitch it's probably the hardest stitch i know and that's going to be in our tutorial this month just to <laughs> just um to fill you all with dread there's lots of more straightforward ones though but i've just put um some stretch and challenge in for those that want it so I've just noticed that Sue's joined us. Hi Sue, glad you're here. I'm using sari silks and um, pearl cotton. Uh, it starts off with black and white and I'm just using strips of sari silk and couching using decorative threads and we're I was tempted to do black and white. My son wanted me to do black and white, but um, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. All these lovely colours. We did a whole month of black and white, and it's not really me, but it was just getting us started using stitches without having to worry about colours. And we've been playing with colour so much this year that I couldn't have all these lovely complementary colours on my table and just do black and white so we started with black and white in the middle and then we've done our complementary colour pairs for the rest and I drew three circles meandered round them so one was here one was here and one was here I think well one was yeah that's right yeah they were there um and i meandered around them with my black and white and then i filled in um i filled in some space either side with my pairs of complementary so where i've used orange thread i've put blue fabric and where i've put uh orange fabric i've put blue thread and so on and so forth and I think I'm on my last strip now. So I'm just bringing this red and green around here. This is my favourite. Oh, I just love red and green. My whole house is red and green. Um, we, we bought a house. We've lived in this house for about eight years now. And when we bought it, it was a bit of a disaster area. And it had been extended. It would help if I put a knot in my thread, wouldn't it? It had been extended in quite a strange way and it it just needed bringing back together to make it feel like it's one house rather than a collection of parts of houses which is how it felt when we moved in um so we just have painted the entire house the same color all the way through not magnolia a gorgeous shade of green and um it's it just makes me really happy and red is our accent colour through the whole house so we've got slightly different shades of of red here and there but it's mostly like berry deep deep crimson it's a bit like the red that i'm using here if you can see it um 
I just love red and green together. I think it looks amazing. It might be on my own with that. Green is my absolute favourite colour. I just love it. Any shade. Don't care. It just reminds me of all the things I love in the world. So I think I am going to leave a little bit of black space at the side. I keep talking to my kids in my classroom. They do love using every last square centimetre of paper, which is great for the environment, but uh, not great for making sense of what they've written when they're writing the bottom line the, or the, the space be beneath the bottom line on each page. And um, I think you have to balance filled areas with space sometimes I think and um, this is quite busy with colour and so I think we could do with a little bit of stillness at the edges so I think this is going to be my last one and then I'll show you my August page and I'll sort of roughly put these four panels together so that you can see the effect of the whole page. And then you can go and have a play. <laughs> see what I'm looking forward to seeing your versions of this. We're just doing sort of fabric tubes almost swirled around made a little swirl and I'm using my decorative couching stitches to make it look a little bit more lively those stitches have fallen together because I'm on a it's these internal bends that have been my nemesis through this piece What have we learnt, folks? We've learnt that this would be better done in a frame. <laughs> so if my recommendation to you, having done it, is that if you're working on felt, you use a bigger square and just put it in a hoop. And if you've got a frame, put the hoop in a frame so that you can use both hands because it, it is quite... A pain trying to control the fabric and the thread at the same time um, we've also learned the benefit of pins through this process <laughs> that actually if you pin it in place it's a lot easier um, so I would I would do that if I was doing this again live I would definitely do it that way um, I have done something like this before I don't remember it being this sort of in need of lots of hands <laughs> um but it's it's been a while so maybe i'm just not remembering it accurately but um or maybe my hand strength has declined over over the years since i last did something like this but um there we go i'm trying not desperately hard not to cut that stitch Just finishing off that edge and that i think is my finished piece so there we go lots of decorative stitching and all my complementary colors there try to get it as close as i can let it focus focus it's great when it works right let's go slowly we can trick it into thinking that nothing's changing <laughs> no it's gone again it'll come back in a minute i'm sure i'll just hold it there and it will just work out what's going on
I hope you can see it okay even though it is struggling to focus so that's my finished piece let's shove those out of the way and bring in our other panels so that's my two there's my purple and yellow i haven't trimmed that one down yet so um that's why it's a bit bigger and then this one will sit quite nicely in there like that and that will be my complimentary colors page and that's going to go on the back of my august page so um i said i'd show you what i've done i've got a variegated thread um it's called indian summer it's a dmc color variations and i've i stitched it one way and then stitched back so that i got different colors and i've just done sheaf stitches all the way along and then i did a button hole wheel blanket stitch wheel in the center didn't like it and found a nice sort of hot red colored button and i put that in the center and so that's my august page that my complimentary colors page is going to go on the back of so i think i think that looks quite fun i'm quite pleased with the way that that's sort of worked its way out as a page so i think that will tuck right in there like that the apple will be trimmed back slightly i think and that's my page so i hope you've enjoyed it i'm um, just gonna scroll back down so that um i can catch up on all the comments um oh it does yeah i yeah it, it like plotted sorry I, you don't know what comment i'm looking at i'm looking at pamela's comment about it looking like a braid with ribbon threaded through it i quite yeah i think that definitely that's uh it's got that sort of feel to it um oh thank you karen <laughs> um i'm not i'm not I'm not very good at lots of things in my life but i think i can teach and um i i think i can i can so i've got a bit of an eye so um if you can benefit from that then i'm just looking at that wondering if it would look better that looks like an intestine now um oh maybe that way quite like that and then it's sort of leading out the page quite like that i'll have a play around decide which way um so thank you very much you do say lovely things <laughs> um it's it's just a joy to have such lovely people um joining in these sessions it's great it does have a medieval flavor like yeah i agree yeah it feels like something you would see it oh i've left a pin in there um say a castle or something yeah it's got that sort of medieval thing going on um this one here i just keep thinking of malvolio in twelfth night with his uh yellow cross gartered stockings that he's tricked into wearing because he thinks somebody fancies him um and it would really impress him and he's made to look a fool but uh that's what i'm thinking of uh do like twelfth night it's fun um so yeah i hope you enjoy that looking forward to seeing what you do and uh, as i said earlier next week is looking to be uh, a corker so i hope that you enjoy it as much as i enjoyed making it um so yeah that's great um i will put the page together i'll put a picture of this on um instagram shortly and we'll get a focused version let's see should we try and trick it again if it'll work this time will it? there we go <laughs> that's it up close finally so there's bits that could be neater but i am stitching and talking and doing lots of things at once so i'm going to be kind to myself um i think the overall effect i quite like so there we go um 
Oh, that's brilliant, Karen. I've just read your comment about pins. That's brilliant. I've just got a random pin cushion here with them all over the place, but I, I am going to invest in a pin wheel. That's a genius idea. Thank you. That might just change my life. <laughs> uh, that's fab. So, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for joining in. I hope um you have a great rest of your day and a good week and look out for our october stitch tutorial which will be on its way as soon as i've finished editing it and i will see you in the next video october is a five week month so i've i'm sort of getting ready to do our fifth week project so if there is anything you would like i've got an idea of what i'm going to do i had planned out the whole year but i've made changes along the way have got an idea about what i'm going to do but if there's anything that you would really love to find out about do uh, message me over on instagram or facebook and or you can message me via the feather stitch house website and i will see what i can do can't promise but i will see what i can do and um yeah have a great rest of your week and i will see you in the next video thanks so much for joining me today it's been lovely having some new faces and chatting to some new people all around the world I mean, we've gone totally international this week so that's really fab have a brilliant rest of your day and i will see you soon bye everyone